So hi, I'm myself Lokesh. I work with Nagaro as a programmer. And uh, the topic that we will discuss today is telemetry data. So what exactly is telemetry data? Telemetry data is uh, you know the events being sent by a vehicle to a cloud or to I IoT hub or you know to APIs. And how we receive the telemetry data is uh, so every car has uh, you know many computers within within you know uh, on dashboard on engine engine called ECU we would call ECU. So the main component we will talk about is ECU, which provides data via different protocols, CANPAN and different protocols, and expose the data via OBT port. OBT port is onboard diagnostic port. So hopefully everyone drives a car, and must, you must have seen a port, you know, on the right hand side of your of your uh, uh, you know steering wheel. There's a port in the car. So that's OBT port. So why the OBT port? We can collect uh, you know many many sort of data, and if the data is being not provided by OBT, so manufacturers do implement uh, other devices and then we need there's a need of you know edge device which could be you must have heard about raspberry pi or reno that can be configured so then different iot devices can be established within car the major one being uh, you know uh, obd port then we can have a different device for air pressure a different device for uh, uh, suspension control different device for uh, remote car lock and lock correct so all the devices can be configured and then uh, edge device, uh, edge device which, which could be Raspberry or being provided by Azure or AWS or any other IoT platform. Uh, then we can send the data to IoT uh, platform which can be processed further. Correct. So the, the kind of data we can collect uh, via uh, uh, car is could be location based data where the car is exactly right now. It could be uh, you know the health alerts of car. Was the engine temperature? Uh, was the engine RPM? Uh, was the acc accelerator? Uh, was the current speed of the vehicle? Whether the brake pedal is, uh, you know, is zero one? Depending on the manufacturer, uh, it could be Suzuki, it could be, you know, uh, Hyundai. Different manufacturer provide different kind of kind of OBD data. So some provide, you know, uh, percentage of, uh, you know, accelerator pedal uh, pressed, or some provide whether it's pressed or not, zero one. So it depend, basically depend upon the provider or depend upon the OBD uh, device or OBD adapter we're using. And yeah, so that's one. So the data we collect uh, is like coolant temperature, RBM, battery, uh, brake, fuel, ignition, whether the car is on or off, uh, speed, door locked and locked. And based upon uh, different uh, manufacturers and different OBD, uh, you know, different, different uh, OEMs, vehicle manufacturers, as well as, you know, the device manufacturers, this data can be tweaked. Or if multiple data is required, we talk about like we can use edge device which can accumulate data from multiple devices and send it to broadcast to some API or uh, or any any IoT hub. The use cases what can we what we can do with the OBD is uh, geofencing. Uh, for example, zoom car you know heavily using geofencing. Driver behavior analysis again zoom car they need to know which driver they can give you know some what kind of discount based based upon their behavior patterns. Suspension control for example um, we are doing research for uh, you know. Uh, so they are being, we are doing some research for a customer where we have to, you know, identify the portals on the road and, you know, do some stuff. Then speed control, uh, for example, any car going beyond 80 kilometers in Zoom car is triggered or there's some limit in Zoom car, 80 or 70 is, you know, is notified the backend operations as well as users notified the car is going uh, above a speed limit. Service register, service register come into play with fleet management. So when, when, a, when an organization is using, uh, you know, some fleet managed software, so they need to know when the service is due, correct? So service is will come into picture based. So this will include driver behavior, which is not a simple thing to do. Uh, so dive, driver behavior, wear and tears of brakes and acceleration, acceleration uh, tire wear and tears, everything will come into picture. So the whole data processing processing will happen in backend. Compliance auditing, compliance auditing as in, uh, you know, we need to know the car is leased to this person for two hours, then this person to two hours, then this person to two hours. And as for compliance, not in India, but, you know, in some countries, this compliance, you can, uh, um, an employee can lease an organization car for this many hours in a month. So for those purposes, they need to show the records to government for tax rebates and all those things. So for compliance auditing purpose and uh, for, you know, real time uh, uh, vehicle routing, for example, Uber, Uber is one of the best use cases for this. And uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, Uber, Ola, and there are, there are many use cases like end-to-end -end logistics delivery, where you collaborate multiple delivery partners, one being, a, you know, a Revogo kind of company, which delivers in truck, then another being, uh, you know, Uber uh, delivery, which will 
meet the truck at, at, at the pickup point and this kind of model is being implemented in uh, uh, in one of the Israel where they are collaborating five different kind of providers for end to end delivery. Uh, so uh, how a typical uh, telemetry ingestion platform will look like. So the car will emit data a car or device will emit data. So it could be either OBD device with a GPRS uh, you know uh, enabled feature or, uh, or IOTS device with again a GPRS or Wi-Fi model. Wi-Fi will not work again a GPRS model. So either it will send a data to IOT device if we have huge 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 traffic or you know huge number of users then IOT will make more sense to manage the devices to upgrade the firmware. I'm not an expert in IOT but yes the IOT will make more sense but again uh, the data can be sent to APIs as well. Once the data is being pushed to APIs, then a broker will come into picture. The broker could be Kafka, or uh, you know Kafka, or uh, RabbitMQ, or uh, maybe any any other any other queuing mechanism, correct? So which can actually decouple the uh, uh, the ingestion and the processing part of the uh, of the you know overall uh, platform. And if you're using IoT gateways, we don't eventually need uh, any broker because IoT itself provide a broker out of the box. And it will, it can handle all the ingestion rate and uh, from different vehicles and serve the, uh, you know, um, underlying uh, uh, processing platform. Then we have many processing option. Uh, one could be, you know, Flink or Spark. Both support uh, Python, uh, being PyFlink and PySpark. And then there are Beam and other, uh, you know, uh, processing platforms as well. And then Cloud is all, all, always there because when you are building this kind of platform, most probably you will be going uh, to Cloud uh, rather than doing in your own data center for POC, uh, you know. Is, is good to do in, in laptops, but when you're building this kind of platform, it's, it's always will go to cloud. There's, there's no other way as of now because cloud is cheap in terms of uh, you know the resources you can acquire, and uh, yeah, and it's easy to start. Then the data can be pushed to for historical uh, you know purposes in in a, in a DFS or you know in NFS, and then the, the process data can be pushed to Redis or again to a broker like Kafka or you know. For in NoSQL as well, any it could be any NoSQL, Cassandra, Aerospike, Mongo, any NoSQL. It could be any NoSQL where the data can be stored and processed. You know, for you know, for let's say near real time uh, historical data, let's say one month data for any sort of analysis for driver behavior analysis and that. Then the, and on top of it, we can have a web server which could be any Python, Node, uh, C sharp, Java, and then we can uh, uh, you know show a real time new view of what uh, you know where the car is where the stats is and uh, you know how 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 the user is driving so this is this is this is what a very short ppt and uh, i've created a very small demo for uh, this session which will have a generator generator will generate a dummy data for you know i uh, plot a road or uh, you know this this road only i, I plot i have some coordinates of uh, road so generator will generate uh, data for the road and it send it will send uh, so so it will send a device id device id device identifier so every every device will have a unique identifier typically it's imei imei is what you have for mobile phone so every device usually have imei correct so typically it's imei imei is mapped to a vehicle at the back end database or most probably at the iot platform an IoT platform enhance and enrich your data and then send it to the uh, processing platform so that you don't have to worry about which IMA devices map to which vehicle or you know uh, those kind of challenges. Then it will have lat long, lat long is your know, current location of the vehicle, ignition, ignition on off, and then the vehicle speed and the transition rate, transition rate will be you know the point of, at which the event is being raised. If ideally, you know, uh, when you see a data coming from a car or you know telemetry data, it has 40 to 50 parameters minimum. But just for the sake of a demo, I created this last night only. So I don't have enough time to create the demo. So just four or five parameters. So then I will start, I will send the data to Kafka producer. I will start the car, then uh, make the car move and then stop the car. So starting the car is ignition on, it will start moving. It will start in the coordinates and then, uh, you know, uh, move the car and stop the car. Then uh, there's a Kafka, uh, Kafka uh, component running on my machine. Then uh, we will be using Spark streaming uh, in PySpark, uh, which will, uh, you know, host it on localhost 7077, where my Spark server, server is running. It will create a, uh, you know, streaming context by which Spark job can stream the data, and it will create. Uh, anyone knows about Spark or Flink here? Yeah. So it will create small, small batches of data, and 
then we'll we'll pass the data using uh, you know Spark APIs, and we will so Kafka most most probably will turn string. We will map into JSON, and then we will generate an alert if if vehicle speed is more than 35 uh, 35 cubic miles kilometer any any parameter 35 units. We will add speed alert into the uh, you know telemetry data or you know the event we are receiving, and push it to Redis. So this is what. Uh, so now, now whatever events we are collecting, we are sending the data to Redis. In parallel, we can send data to you know any NoSQL and to the DFS as well. DFS being distributed file system, correct? And if whenever we we go to the Redis for this for a specific uh, car ID, we will always get the latest record being sent to the car. And in the case that you know the device, the edge device is not responding, that's the responsibility of an IoT platform to identify whether the device is being active or not, and then notify us that device is being not active, take some action, correct? And that those all things can be configured in IoT platform, uh, you know, about alerts and notification. And then we'll start, and then we have a Flask server running which is doing nothing. Uh, we have uh, so I have hard coded. Uh, Device ID, device A in in the uh, you know HTML page. So it is sending a, a, a request to uh, you know a data API, and uh, reading uh, Redis uh, that specific API uh, that key from the Redis and sending it to the uh, web UI. So the demo will look like this. So if you start uh, the you know generator. So the car ignition is off. So it's it's being turned off. If you see here. And the car has started moving, so you know the movement is not smooth. So this can be we can make it smooth via animations and tuning, and you know, or maybe a custom tuning. Um, so I, I don't have time to make all those things look fancy. And if the car, if the speed is going above uh, 30, uh, 35, so we are receiving an event uh, which says uh, you know the speed is uh, above thirty five, and we are changing the color of this box. Now again, it goes back to orange. And the events we are receiving are mostly like this. So device ID, lat long, mission, vehicle speed, a transaction date, and speed alert. So we we are receiving speed alert when the speed is above 40, and we are not receiving speed alerts when speed is uh, you know uh, less than 35. So uh, yeah, so this is this is all about uh, the quick demo.